Okay, so we're going to discuss rejection region. Rejection region is the region where the value of the test statistic lies or falls for which we will reject the null hypothesis. Rejection region starts on the critical value following the direction of the test. Thus, the critical value also depends on whether the test is two-tailed or one-tailed. In finding the critical value, the test statistic should also be considered if it is a z-test or t-test. For z-test, this will be the table to be used. And for the t-test, here is the table. To appreciate more the rejection region, simply follow the steps. A. Determine the appropriate test statistic. B. Identify the direction of the test. C. Find the critical value. D. Compare the critical value and the test statistic. And E. Reject or accept the null hypothesis. Let's have an example. The researcher wants to test if the null hypothesis where mu is equal to 50 is accepted or rejected regarding the daily average savings of the students. The population standard deviation is 15. He computed a mean of 55 from 100 samples. Determine the rejection region using the critical value at a significance level of 0 0.05 and a two-tailed test. Now let's have the solution by following the steps mentioned earlier. Letter A, determine the appropriate test statistic. So the test statistic is a z-test because our n is greater than 30 or our sample size is greater than 30. B, identify the direction of the test. So it is non-directional or two-tailed. Letter C, find the critical value using this table. So we have a significance level of 0 0.05 and we have a two-tailed. Therefore, our critical value is plus or minus 1.96 or positive negative 1.96 letter d compare the critical value and the test statistic so we have to compute the test statistic or the z value so we have the formula z is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean all over the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which is equal to z is equal to 55 minus 50 all over 15 divided by the square root of 100, which is equal to 5 over 15 divided by 10. And it is equal to 5 over 1.5. Five. And 5 divided by 1.5 is equal to 3.33. Therefore, our test statistic or computed test statistic is 3.33. So let us compare the critical value and the test statistic. Z is equal to 3.33, which is greater than the critical value of 1.96. And letter E, reject or accept the null hypothesis. So since the computed test is statistic is greater than the critical value, the null hypothesis is rejected. Let's have another example. The researcher wants to test if the null hypothesis where mu is equal to 495 is accepted or rejected 
regarding the daily average salary of the employees. He computed a mean of 500 from 25 samples with a standard deviation of 12. Determine the rejection region using the critical value at a significance level of 0 0.01 and a one-tailed test. Let's have now the solution. Letter A, determine the appropriate test statistic. So the test statistic is T test because our sample size or N is less than 30. B, identify the direction of the test. It is directional or one-tailed. C, find the critical value. So we have to find the degrees of freedom first. With the formula, df is equal to n minus 1. Our sample size given is 25. So 25 minus 1 is 24. So our degrees of freedom is 24. Let us now find the critical value. So our degrees of freedom is 24. And we have a one-tailed test with significance level of 0 0.01 so our critical value is 2.492 or 2.492 letter d compare the critical value and the test is statistic so we have to compute first the test is statistic or the value of t with the formula the sample mean minus the population mean all over the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which is equal to 500 minus 495 all over 12 divided by the square root of 25, which is equal to 5 over 12 divided by 5 and it is equal to 5 over 2.4 and 5 divided by 2.4 is equal to 2.08 now let's compare the critical value and the test the statistic so our t value is equal to 2.08 which is less than the critical value of 2.492 and E reject or accept the null hypothesis so since the computed test is statistic is less than the critical value the null hypothesis is accepted let us now find the critical value and the rejection region for the hypothesis based on the information given in finding the critical value and the rejection region, we have to consider the given value of the sample size or n so that we will know what test statistic is appropriate. So, if n or the sample size is greater than 30, we will use the C test. And if n or the sample size is less than 30, we will use the T test. Also, look for the inequality symbol being used in the alternative hypothesis or HA so that we will know what is the direction of the test. If it uses not equal to symbol, we use two-tailed test. And if it uses less than or greater than symbol, we use one-tailed. So in number one given, our null hypothesis is mu is equal to 25. Our alternative hypothesis is mu is not equal to 25. Our significance level is 0 0.05. Our sample size is equal to 40. And our standard division is 3. So, because our n is greater than 30, we will use the z-test. 
So our significance level is 0 0.05. We have a two-tailed. So our critical value is positive negative 1.96. Therefore, our critical value is plus or minus 1.96 or positive negative 1.96. And our rejection region is at Z, which is less than or equal to negative 1.96 or Z is greater than or equal to 1.96. Number two, we have null hypothesis where mu is equal to 30. Our alternative hypothesis where mu is greater than 30. Our significance level is 0 0.05. Our sample size is 20. And our standard deviation is 2. So, our end is less than 30. So, we're going to use the t-test. Wherein, to find the critical value, we're going to use the table for t-test or the t-table. So let us find the critical value using the degrees of freedom. So df is equal to n minus 1. So our n is 20 minus 1 is equal to 19. So our degrees of freedom is 19. So let, let us look. The degrees of freedom, which is 19 in our table. So we have 19. And we have a one-tailed test. Wherein our significance level is 0 0.05. So our critical value is 1.729. So our critical value is 1.729. And our rejection region is at T, which is greater than or equal to 1.729. Number 3, null hypothesis where mu is equal to 50. Alternative hypothesis where mu is less than 50. Our significance level is 0 0.01. Our sample size is 35. And our standard deviation is 1.5. So because our end is greater than 30, we're going to use the z-test. So we have a significance level of 0 0.01. And we have a one-tailed test. So our critical value is at positive negative 2.33. Therefore, our critical value is equal to negative 2.33 and our rejection region is at Z which is less than or equal to negative 2.33. Number 4, we have null hypothesis where mu is equal to 32. Alternative hypothesis where mu is not equal to 32. Significance level is 0 0.01. Our sample size is 15. And our standard deviation is 2.5. So because our sample size is less than 30, we're going to use the t-table or the t-test. Okay, using the t-table. So let us find the critical value using the degrees of freedom. So df is equal to n minus 1. Our n is 15 minus 1 is 14. Therefore, our df or degrees of freedom is 14. So let us look 14 in our table. 14. And we have a two-tailed test. Wherein our significance level is 0 0.01. Therefore, our critical value is 2.977. So our critical value is equal to positive negative 2.977 and our rejection region is at T which is less than or equal to negative 2.977 or T 
which is greater than or equal to 2.977.